Drum and bass is a mixture of lots of musics from different cultures. It's the first music that was originated out of the UK, going back to the jungle days. Drum and bass is that original rave energy, still moving, still traveling, still going forward, still developing, you know, still evolving. And Drum and bass came from the minds of many London maniacs. I think it's jungle finally grown up. Drum and bass is a music that at the moment in time goes at about 180 BPM. Don't be scared of that because we're always dancing to the bass line which is half time. I guess it's kind of come from a lot of different types of music. Uh, hardcore, uh, maybe techno, acid house, dub. There's lots of versions of this but I, I guess the official version is it grew out of um, the hardcore scene, and you can go further back than that, I guess, but um, straight out of the hardcore scene. It came from sort of hip hop, it came from reggae, it came from London, really, I think. Uh, no offence to people that started originally or weren't from London, but to me, it, it represented that kind of, um, I don't know, sort of um, high rise pirate radio. Um, kind of, it was freak music really. The easiest way to describe it from what it was in the earlier days, it was like uh, the incorporation of, let's like, say, uh, a speeded up hip hop breakbeat to double time with dub bass lines on it and uh, samples from techno and house music. It was revolved around the use of an arm and break mostly and uh, it built up a whole scene and then, and then the sound evolved into what we now call drum and bass which is basically music at 170. It's like electronic dance music if you're into that sort of thing. It's bass driven and it's usually hosted by some sort of MC. Yeah, it's, 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 it's from here. It's, from, it's just a London thing, it's a UK thing. Um, you know, a whole bunch of people from around the city, you know, a fair chunk of them from East and whatnot just, yeah, tinkering around with, with studio equipment and stumbling upon something that was kind of cool. At that time, 88, 89, obviously we'd had the Summer of Love in 1988, and so you had Garage coming from America, you had House coming from America, you had Techno coming from Europe, and Acid Sounds, and I suppose coming from up Sheffield, Manchester, where you had this very industrial sound that was happening, and the first DJs that kind of started to play a house track with an acid track with a techno track were seen as kind of taking major risks and those people were Groove Rider and Fabio and Brian G and Mickey Finn and LTJ Bookham playing breaks, you know, what seemed to be kind of breaks involving kind of, I suppose, hip hop kind of breaks. And most of the DJs around at that time told them they were a little bit crazy. You know, Groove Rider had come from techno, Fabio had come from more of the house scene, but this thing that they were doing was, people were saying it was crazy and they shouldn't be doing it, you're either one DJ or another, you know, but they didn't feel they wanted to do that. They wanted to create something completely different in that mix situation, obviously with the revolution of the Technics coming along and I suppose all the mixing had come from America, from the street kids just kind of jamming on the streets and I suppose as well it was slightly different because what the kids were doing in America was scratching and tricks whereas our first original DJs were doing this thing called mix and blending so they were actually keeping these things in the mix and what was being created in the mix wasn't available. So people from England, Reinforced, um, Ragga Twins, they obviously heard this sound and tried to cre recreate it in the studio and it's weird because I've just done a few 89, 90 sets and I can see its progression because I wasn't actually DJing then, I was just buying the music and it's amazing how you can see that progression to what it's become in a form of drum and bass and then obviously as drum and bass, I suppose we called it hardcore back in the day, it was kind of being then influenced by reggae. Lots of reggae and rap elements infused into hardcore and 
Long story short. 31 seconds changed it, basically, innit? it? Even before that, to be honest. But yeah, I guess that's, that's the standout, the standout, standout of the tune that people, so, people do think around that era. But um, we were chatting about it yesterday, actually. Is I argued with someone, which I think is the right argument, that Lenny D. Ice invented Jungle with We Are E. And I think a lot of the old herds back that one up. And that's certainly the first time I heard it and was like, what's this? It's different from the hardcore. So that's... That's my answer on that one, that's where I think it comes from. Five, and I suppose what we'd done was we'd taken the breaks from hip hop, we'd taken the chords from house, we'd taken the sounds from techno, we'd taken the lyrics from dancehall, and so this all merged into drum and bass, and we'd taken the bass line from reggae. And I suppose a good way to describe drum and bass is the bastardization of all musics. That's what it's, it's everything, you know, all rolled into one and that's why earlier I said it's dramatic because if you're not into a drama changing very quickly and emotions changing very quickly maybe drum and bass is not for you but for me personally it encompasses all different musics that I grew up with you know even touches of disco and and that kind of thing so to me it involved in quite a weird way but it was down to the DJs really kind of deciding I don't want to just play techno, I want to, oh, I fancy a little bit of that in there, do you know what I mean? And I suppose that's why drum and bass has evolved as a very DJ mixing underground style. Obviously it started off as, as quite a small underground music, um, as I say UK based, now you've got producers all over the world, you've got raves all over the world, you've got um, DJs from, from all over the world, and it's really become a huge global scene even though it's still underground. Um, so it's, it's really an exciting music that, that just keeps growing um, without ever exploding too much, which is, which is a good thing. Like it's, it's an underground music and it should stay an underground musical. <laughs> The sound has evolved over the years because I think the technology's got a lot easier. Um, you know, many years ago, to make a tune, you had to be able to get into a studio that had loads of outboard equipment. Now, you could just, just need a computer. You don't even need speakers. You just need a computer and a set of headphones and you can produce and make Make music. So like major changes, definitely. There's, you know, less sub bass. And yeah, more, I think, I think, I think but I mean, yeah, that's but it's it. all leady and the, you know, yeah, that's, that's, it's all leads now, man. It used to just be literally, you'd hear an 808 sub bass, and that would, the crowd would go <laughs> spastic. I think it's that, it's like. the box model trying to fit everything into that frequency range mm. that you can do. Um, yeah, yeah, people, people pushing it as hard as they can it, push yeah. it, and certain people can do it. I actually think the era. Now's era, it seems to be a lot better than seven or eight years ago. I think it's changing again now and it's coming back, but I think a lot of the feeling for a, a while got lost in the music, um, in certain parts of it definitely, and it's just about how noisy can we make this sound and, and um, you know, how angry can we make it rather than like, is this a good piece of music? As much as I love technology, and I understand it has to all move forward, and you know, I play old school, I know I'm, stuck, I'm an old fart stuck in the old days and all that, but the thing with technology is technology kind of makes it, makes everything. They're having it, aren't they, ever singing that? Technology makes everything kind of perfection, do you know what I mean? So, and to me, music shouldn't be perfection in a way where it becomes mechanical and the, I mean, the only gripe I've got, I mean it's great, it's great, like, I've got tunes that I played that were made 25 years ago that are so hard to mix together because technology was so rubbish back then that the tunes weren't even really made in time and you know it's great now that everything's made perfectly, everything runs parallel and it's all great and it's all, but with the technology thing, you lose a bit of the vibe along the way, I find, because tunes used to be made on a vibe. No one thought about, oh, it's got to be like this, well, I've got to have the levels, it's got to, I can't run like, I can't drop that there. It was just, that sounds good, fuck it, sling it in, that would do. I just think it's kind of evolved into a, a worldwide thing, really. It's sort of kind of um, spread across all countries, all cultures and everything. So, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a hard question to answer how it's evolved, but um, it is what it is.